Greetings, mortals. Uh, this is Stone Monk Gamer with the Mortal Realms crew, and I'm recording a Topic of the Week video in response to Vince Venturella's question, how do I feel about the Faction Focus articles on the Warhammer Community website? Now, I think part of the um, reason for asking this question is that uh, some people have, uh, rightly or wrongly, um, question whether or not these articles have added value, whether or not they're just fluff pieces to get clicks, etc. And uh, to some extent, yeah, uh, trying to run a website like a Warhammer Community page uh, with daily content does require a lot of things to be written. And I know Games Workshop has a small staff, and as Vince pointed out, this is a marketing team. So they've got to find content to, to fill this, the pages with. What I think overall they do a good job of though is coming up with interesting things for us to look at. And right now, as we're getting into AOS 2.0, how, how that affects each faction uh, is something that's on our mind. Uh, to Vince's point, there's certainly times where I think they could, would love to see more in depth, um, where you know, um, you know, we see more on a specific uh, faction. But I think what they've hit is what I would expect from them especially given a that there's plenty of other articles that f focus in on specific new rules and then b leaving something for us to discover once it actually drops so i think it all fits in line with my expectations that doesn't mean to say that everyone has the same expectations as me but i do think that when it comes to games workshop and and content like this in order to protect your sanity uh you've got to you've got to figure out good expectations um for what we're getting now let's take a look. One of the things um, that uh, we've heard as, a, as you know, kind of an example of the complaint is like this first uh, section here about elves that uh, they kind of uh, took this and, and threw all of the remaining uh, elf factions that some have critiqued are too small that aren't very useful for, for allying in or, you know, doing anything with. And they've broken up, you know, Darkling Covens, Wanderers, um, and even Swift Talk uh, agents. Uh, into these different things, which kind of, you know, maybe belies that they're not going to do anything with them in the future. Now, we do know that we've just gotten two elf factions with um, uh, Malaria, sorry, uh, Marathi and the Daughters of Cain, and then uh, Ideneth Deepkin, um, thanks to Teclas. So we've just gotten two elf factions that have been really big hits. I, we do know that we're going to be getting two more elf factions, uh, one with Tyrion, uh, and one with uh, Malarian. Uh, so we don't know exactly what those will be or how they'll fit in, but we know we're going to get those at some point. It's not likely that too much of this, what we have, is going to fit into that. I think they're going to be reimagined. Maybe one of these could be. The Wanderers had the most recent kind of update with uh, with their, their models, so maybe they get roped into to one of these. Um, you know, uh, But we don't, for the most part, we have to assume that uh, all of these are kind of standalone. One of the other critiques they got was that, uh, you know, for instance, the Swift Talk agents um, got relegated to, or as one of their roles, is couriers and messengers uh, for the free cities. <coughs> so um, one of the issues with that that some people have is that it makes one of this, these kind of epic units from Warhammer Fantasy Battle um, become kind of a, you know, a commonplace, common folk type of thing. On the other hand, some people are looking for that every day, what do these guys do in the realms? And we know that in the upcoming core rulebook that we're going to get more of that kind of uh, low fantasy treatment of Age of Sigmar. You know, you take this vast, um, uh, endless realm uh, system and you boil it down to one city and one street and can you pinpoint what this one person is doing at this time of day? Some people really want that. And Games Work's trying to provide that. And so that's what this particular sentence is trying to do, is bring these guys down to a more common level. But some people don't like that. You're not going to please everybody. I get whether or not you want to keep um, this thing here, this thing here. Um, if you want to keep the Swift Hawk agent um, sky cutter in a more elegant and epic role, then ignore this. If you like, you know, kind of the idea that there might be some sky cutter crews that aren't as good on the battlefield, right? Yeah, they grew up in it. Um, they maybe had a, a parents or something like that who uh, got them into this position, but they're not that good at it. Uh, they can be fast, but they're not good in a fight. So relegate them to couriers and messengers. Um, 
and you know there's a place for them to be both um, but choose what you want to do it's your uh, lore it's your story so so take it what you want the other side is that you know um, and Vince critiques we get little snippets but we don't get real in depth and I think um, I mean this is in line I think with what they're trying to do with these and it's just tease um, on one hand we've been getting a lot of um, rules updates here's what the next rule is going to be etc um, which is cool um, but then here we've got for instance we've got uh, you know a miasmic blade there miasmatic blade they they're showing us little artifacts that are coming from um, instead of giving us a list of all the artifacts they're just using these as opportunities to to show us other kind of leaks other uh, tips etc and uh, what I think the primary role of these factions is to get you thinking about the addition in new ways so for instance um, the gut busters which was one that uh, I was interested in um, they talked to us a little bit about um, what it means to play gus gut busters now what's important and I'll, I'll admit too I fast forward through some of the player perspective and I get to the new edition stuff um, for instance uh, the iron guts are um, lower in cost more iron guts on the board if I can even get like three more on in a in a unit that unit's more likely to get to its its place and do some damage as opposed to you know um, having six on the board and whittling it down to one or two. Now I'll have nine on the board and whittle it down to three and see what kind of, of damage they can do. Um, then we've got the Butcher. And in, in light of the new 30-inch uh, Dispel, the Butcher has the ability to, upon Dispel to heal uh, wounds, uh, 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 two or more wounds, or heal a wound on a two-up. Um, so that's pretty good for a Butcher to, to now be a wizard, have the Lookout Sir, have 30-inch Unbind, and now be have a chance of of healing wounds back um that makes this whole that changes my perspective on this army and and uh i've got had uh six ogre bulls all built ready to become battle line for my destruction but they were just sitting in a drawer after reading this i pulled them out and i started putting paint on them <coughs> so for me so for me this was you know successful in getting me interested in one of my armies that i haven't put on the table in a while I did a lot of death in 2017, so 2018 may be uh, my year for, you know, playing through destruction for the first half, and then uh, seeing what I want, you know, maybe stormcast in the second half, because that's another one where I've got some past stormcast models that I want to see what they can do in this new edition. So um, in that regard, um, I think it probably for some people it did rejuvenate. I could see that on Twitter that some people uh, would see these and be like, oh, I'm going to go and try that. Uh, I'm going to go look at that, you know, and I think that's what they're trying to do with these. They're trying to get us to go back to old armies and just take a look at them. Uh, be curious about these other war scrolls and see what we can find. As they've di dived into this, you can bet that they've been, and this is also to show that they've paid attention to some of these um, armies and brought them in line and tried to make them useful again. Um, the other side of it is if they had left one of these uh, out, uh, you know, there'd be a group of people saying, well, why didn't the host of Slanesh get, you know, uh, uh, any attention in the faction focus? Why didn't Grot, um, etc.? Uh, and then on the flip side, uh, there's some that just got recent books, Maggotkin and Nurgle, Legion and Agash, and say, well, what were you guys thinking? Were you guys thinking about this? Um, and of course they were. Um, and so um, some of it is just making sure that they're touching on all of the the factions that are important, that are sticking around, that are going to be here. And it's a nod. It's an affirmation. Um, that, to be said, that it, then there's, like I said, the, the, the sprinkling in of different rules and different leaks. And, you know, uh, for instance, um, in the Idoneth, i got to remember that this is an alphabetical here. In the Idoneth, uh, we got both, we got two kind of uh, leaks. One, we got um, some important information that when you, your general is slain, you get to pick another model from your army to become your new general, which is fantastic. It definitely, that, that change of command uh, in on the battlefield is an important part of kind of wargaming storytelling. I really like that. I really enjoy that. Um, and we got that in this faction focus. And then, you know, suffocating grave tide, uh, this war scroll for this ep um, endless spell uh, came out here and, and most recently. And I did another video on all the different endless spells and what we knew about them. And this is one that we didn't know 
all of the rules for. Um, and so glad to see this. Um, and so I thought it was really well executed in terms of we want to look in here because there might be hidden things. Um, but we're also looking at what other people's, uh, what other um, factions are up to. Are they still here in the realm? Are they getting put into legends? I think there's a big indicator here that most of these are not getting put into the legends uh, grouping. Um, or, you know, and maybe disappointingly for some that they're not getting put into a, um, you know, maybe there would be an elves faction for all of these that um, is different from uh, the free peoples and the dispossessed. You know, that would be good news for somebody who's looking at elves and saying, hey, I don't want to do Grand Alliance. I want to do elves, um, but I don't want these new two. You know, I, I have models for these old ones. How can I put them together? Um, so that's that's my my take on this. Uh, I had I didn't have any expectations for these, really. Um, I didn't expect them to be um, long. Um, I knew that the team has a lot of space to fill uh, daily. Some of these came out twice a day. Um, and they're trying to build that excitement. And there was a lot in here that gave you tidbits into the next edition, as well as, and, and they sprinkled it into these so that you would dive into them and you'd look at all these different things, get curious and go back and look, um, be ready to go back and look at the war scrolls. Um, certainly when it comes to command abilities, you can look at what's already there. Um, but there's going to be new stuff coming out. Be ready to evaluate, reevaluate your old armies in light of Age of Sigmar 2.0. And that's exactly what they want you to be doing. And when it comes to players who maybe have been out of the game for a little bit and wanting to come back in, this is just showing them, hey, here's a couple of things to look at. Go check out your army. Be ready to check out these rules. And as Vince said, this is marketing too. They're just trying to get people to take an interest in the game, to pay it, to, to turn their head and take a look. I don't think there's anything dishonest here. I don't think there's anything. Um, yes, it's marketing, but marketing and, and marketing can be honest. Uh, if at times they overplay their excitement, these guys are gamers, and the people writing this are gamers, and they're excited about these different uh, models and units and whatever. Excitement isn't a crime. Uh, even if you, as a match play uh, gamer or a competitive gamer or just whatever, maybe you're tired of all the hype, um, you know, that's not something to get uh, up there, uh, <laughs> up their grill, up in the grill about. Um, just enjoy it for what they are. Uh, take what you want out of it, ignore what you don't want out of it. Uh, for me, the faction focus were a fun time. I was scouring them for interesting rules and hunting, which is something that I needed and wanted out of these. And I got to revisit my gut busters and, and uh, imagine what they're going to be in uh, Age of Sigmar 2.0. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like it. Subscribe uh, for more uh, videos uh, in, the, in this week and next week, etc. Um, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll see you back here later. Goodbye, mortals.